Good evening. I'm so honored to be speaking to all of you about what's in store for you at this home on the hill. No matter what your journey to Denison looks like, you're all about to share an incredible experience. The next four years are yours to become independent, find your passions, and continue to learn who you are and what you stand for. Today, you accept the values that Denison has to offer. Mutual respect, tolerance, civility, and autonomous thinking. Today, you become a Denisonian for life. With all the divisiveness in the world right now, I want to take a few minutes to speak about the environment that you all are stepping into. Time and time again, students cite the sense of community as the reason Denison really feels like family. I'm sure you'll hear it at least a few more times today, but relationships truly do make the quality of this Denison education. You'll meet people here that make lasting impressions, people that support you unconditionally, and truly make you feel valued and respected. Denison is not the sort of place that makes anyone feel lesser than, and that includes you, the first year students. You make up a quarter of our community, and we want you to feel at home. We've all been in your shoes, so I'd like to emphasize the importance of asking for help when you need it. Friends, RAs, faculty, staff, and your August orientation leaders. We're all here to help you find your place in this Denison community. There are so many things I wish I knew when beginning my Denison experience. Don't spend all of your money on pizza. All-nighters are not that helpful. Don't eat ice cream for breakfast just because you can. The list goes on and on. However, there was some advice I did receive along the way that really influenced my experience for the better, and today I'd love to pass that along to you. One, engage yourself in the community because you only get out what you put in. Along with being involved in what you already love, I encourage you to take advantage of this time to explore. Don't let one aspect of the Denison experience swallow you whole. There's so much to engage in here, so give yourself the time to get lost in the richness of all that surrounds you. Take that class you know little about. Join that club you've never heard of before. Sit with someone you don't know in the dining hall. Leave your comfort zone and discover all the Hill has to offer. In order to benefit from the Denison community, you have to actually participate in the Denison community. Sometimes you don't know the value of a moment until it becomes a memory. Yes, this is a Dr. Seuss quote. However, it will ring true regarding some of your experiences here on the Hill. I'm certain you've heard this before, but your time will go fast, so make the most of it. Sooner than you think, you'll be in my shoes crying as you walk to your last first day of class. Two, engage in conversation, but learn how to listen. Denison is a racially, socially, economically, and politically diverse place. You will not agree with everyone you meet here. However, it's important to listen and respect the opposing views that will inevitably confront you. It's no secret that our national climate is a bit of a mess. We have such important issues to navigate on this campus, and I urge you to address them with one another. However, please keep in mind that the conclusions we reach are less important than our discussions that we're having. Don't be afraid to admit you're wrong or haven't decided yet. Don't be afraid to disagree with those around you. Don't be afraid to ask why. Someone I look up to once told me that you can only grow by, by questioning what you already believe. Denison is the safest place to challenge yourself in this way. So I encourage you to have these tough conversations. Stand up for others, stand up for what you believe. Just please keep in mind there's always room to grow. Three, engage yourself in the present. Because of all of the incredible opportunities that Denison has to offer, students often get swept up in planning too far ahead. I'm definitely guilty of that myself. It's easy to get so focused on the future that you're not absorbing the present moment. So I'm not saying don't make schedules or plans. I'm simply suggesting don't be afraid to live in the moment. When asked the common question, what makes a Denison student, there's only one answer that comes to my mind. We are engaged, we are passionate, we are supportive, and we are willing to challenge one another, raising each other to the highest standard of respect and thoughtfulness. Today, you will become this Denison student. You've been given four years to explore this incredible place, and while I can't foresee exactly who you'll become, I can promise you that Denison will change you for the better. Take advantage of all that Denison offers you. Take advantage of the fact that with this education, you'll be equipped to change the world. Take pride in being a Denison student and take pride in this beautiful place you get to call home. Welcome class of 2020. And I'll now ask Julie Haupt, Vice President for Institutional Advancement and Denison alumna to join me at the podium. Good evening. As Sarah said, my name is Julie Haupt, 
and I am the Vice President for Institutional Advancement and a proud member of the class of 1975. It's my privilege on behalf of the entire Denison family to welcome you to the college. By becoming a student here, you and your family have become members of the Denison family. Our family consists of your fellow students, the faculty and staff, more than 30,000 alumni, as well as parents of Denison students and friends of the college, including the residents of Granville and Licking County. Members of this family can be found all over the world, and they are ready to help you in all kinds of ways. Just like your own family, the Denison family has traditions and values. Values like integrity, respect, loyalty, and gratitude. And it's gratitude that I want to talk to you about tonight. Most of you, in fact, almost all of you, were given some form of scholarship aid to come to Denison. A few of you even received full tuition. But even if you didn't receive a financial aid package, you've all actually received a scholarship to come to Denison. Here's how. Denison's operating budget each year is a little over $100 million. That budget pays for everything from beakers and computer software to theater scene shops and sound systems, from athletic equipment and artificial turf to violins and bassoons, from salaries and benefits to phone systems and snow removal. I know it's hard to believe tonight that there will be snow, but there will be snow. Tuition covers some of that cost, but only about half. A big chunk of the rest of those expenses, about $40 million a year, is covered every year by the Denison family through gifts to the annual fund, as well as special gifts that go to endowment and special projects. And here's what's really important about that. The alums and parents who support this college financially do it out of gratitude and a tradition of giving back. Gratitude for what the college did for them or for their children. Gratitude for the professor who opened their minds to ideas and opportunities they'd never considered before. Gratitude for coaches who believed in them, even when they didn't believe in themselves. Gratitude for a staff member who took a chance on them. Gratitude for friendships that started here and have lasted a lifetime. Gratitude for an educational experience that shaped their adult lives, often in ways they could never have imagined. As the newest members of the Denison family, you'll want to show your gratitude too. It's really easy, and it won't cost you a dime, at least not yet. Here are a few things you can do right away to say thank you for the remarkable gift that you've been given, a Denison education. First, go to class. Be there on time. <laughs> Be there on time and turn off your mobile devices. <laughs> Do your homework. Participate in class on a team in a student organization. Respect this campus and the village of Granville. Pick up your mess, and sometimes pick up somebody else's mess. Be kind to your roommate, your classmate, your teammate, your professor, the folks who work in the dining halls, and the folks who will shovel the walks this winter. And one more way to show your gratitude. Many of you will receive an email in a few weeks from Maureen Severson, our Director of Stewardship, asking you to write a thank you note to the donor who gave the money to create the scholarship that made it possible for you to come here. Write that note. Write it immediately. It doesn't have to be long. You don't have to tell your life story. It's nice to tell the donor a few things about yourself, that you're an athlete or an artist, what you might major in, that you love Game of Thrones or country music, but write the note. Write it right away and write it gratefully. Gratitude is just one of the values and traditions we hold dear at Denison. You'll hear about others tonight and in the weeks to come as you learn more about what it means to be a member of this family. Another tradition is to have two students serve as representatives of the class of 2020 uh, at this ceremony. And we select these two as the student whose hometown is the farthest from Denison and who is the nearest to the campus. So I'm pleased to introduce Alex Muir, who's from Granville and lives about three miles from campus, and Takahuru Higuchi, who's from Sri Lanka and traveled 9,017 miles to get here.
So wait one second, don't go yet. <laughs> this, this is the banner for the class of 2020. Behind you are the banners of students who have, of the class banners of students who have preceded you over the previous century. You'll see your banner again upon the occasion of your graduation, and then it will join others as part of Denison's historical record and will be displayed every year on reunion weekend. And now I am pleased to introduce to you Dr. Dave Busan, class of 1981 and chair of the faculty. Unlike Julie, I have to wear glasses to read this. I'm privileged to teach at my alma mater. In 39 years ago, I was just as privileged as you are now to embark on a four-year student career at Denison. Apparently, there was no induction ceremony, such as this one for new students in 77, though President Bob Good made extensive remarks at an all-college convocation at the conclusion of the first day of classes. Incidentally, that day began for me at 8.30 by stepping into my first college class, a history one titled American Civilization. And it ended with my New York Mets losing to the Phillies on their way to another last place finish. <laughs> but let's get back to that convocation that I don't seem to recall. I'd like to thank our library, Stephanie Kays, who unearthed the text of President Good's remarks. Good began his talk by speaking of community. He emphasized that organized societies aren't necessarily communities. Communities must arise from a shared purpose, and that at Denison, our shared purpose is the advancement and dissemination of knowledge, values, and artistic accomplishment. In essence, Denison students, faculty, administrators, and staff comprise an academic community. Forty years ago, this dissemination that Good spoke of was ostensibly the faculty's purview. And while the faculty, those who will teach you in classes, science labs, musical ensembles, theater productions, and the like, are trained professionals in their chosen areas of scholarly interest, I would hate to think that your education over the coming years will be so top-down. There's certainly room for learning from each other, both in and out of the classroom, on the playing field, and other endeavors that define your social lives. While we are all members of this academic community, President Good continued his address by stating that his hope was that Denison was increasingly becoming a total community. He went on to say, to be a total community means that we, all of us, are concerned about the quality of classroom or formal learning and the quality of our life together beyond the classroom. To be a total community means that faculty members challenge students to broaden their experience in meaningful ways by the selection of their extracurricular and off-campus activities and that students challenge professors to become part of a community that seriously wants to explore the difference between formal studies and creative leisure and on occasion, without any seriousness at all, simply wants to have fun. Anecdotally, I might add that no one ever accused a Denison student of not knowing how to have fun. While I might quibble at the edges with Good's definition of a total community, by choosing to be here today, you have taken a big step toward becoming a constituent of this college's total community. And with that choice comes responsibilities. Unless you want that top-down education I spoke of earlier, it's incumbent on each of you to come here with an open mind and a willingness to do the work necessary to learn, but also to question what you learn. Do the reading. And I might add, comprehend the reading you do. Do the daily homework. Come to class prepared to learn and to disagree. Engage with your fellow students and professors. This is the roadmap to becoming a critical thinker. Denison has a student-faculty ratio of 10 to 1. While this doesn't mean that your classes will have only 10 students in them, it does mean that you can't remain anonymous by sitting in the back of the classroom. There is no back of the classroom at Denison. Take advantage of your instructors. Get to know them. Make use of their office hours. Ask them questions outside of class. Believe it or not, the vast majority of you will leave this hill in four years having connected with one or more of your professors in significant ways. High school is over. It's the minor league to Denison's major league. To further the baseball analogy, at Denison, you'd better learn to hit a curveball. And those fastballs that were easy to hit in high school are no longer going to be thrown down the middle of the plate. From now on, you're going to have to think better while in the batter's box awaiting the next pitch. As you move into your residence halls, be aware of those fellow students who might not look like you, might not dress like you, or might not talk like you. 
extend a hand and a greeting to them. Take out your earbuds, put down your phones, and talk to each other. Get to know one another. This too is part of being a member of our total community. Unfortunately, experience can't be taught, but if it could, I'd teach you my past 35 years since graduating from Denison. College isn't the best four years of your life. If you do these Denison years right, every year after graduation will be better than the preceding one. Live in the moment, revel in it, savor it. Plan for the future by doing the right things today, tomorrow, and over the next four years. And if you do, I think you'll agree with me that it's a pretty good life. Professor Ching Chu Hu of Denison's Department of Music has composed a very special piece of music to mark this occasion. The fanfare for the class of 2020 will be performed tonight and then again upon the occasion of your commencement from Denison in May of 2020. It's now my pleasure to introduce Denison's 20th president, Dr. Adam Weinberg. So, looking at my remarks, I'm thinking I like Sarah's better. <laughs> she just asked you if I can read those. Um, you know, I want to start with just some, um, what my kids would call sh some shout outs. How, how about a huge shout out to Juno staff, Augo staff, Prio staff, RAs, HRs, amazing football players, the Dean of the First Year, Mark Moeller, Chrissy Casson, and a huge, huge, huge shout out to all the facility folks who helped get us in this place tonight. So to the Denison class of 2020, Welcome to Denison, welcome to Granville, and welcome to college. You are now Denisonians. When you decided to attend Denison, you made the choice to come to a college where relationships run deep and the education is transformative. This is a place where students form friendships very quickly, you are already doing it, and some of these will last a lifetime. This is a college where student-faculty relationships form a kind of mentorship that's powerful and too often rare in higher education. This is a place where students look back at graduation, hopefully not inside, but outside, with pride on what they've accomplished and on who they've become, and they get a little bit teary-eyed about leaving the hill. All that's a long way of saying, I'm excited for you. Denison alumnus and former Princeton University president Bill Bowen once said, 
the purpose of college is to educate students with an openness to new ideas and new friendships, respect for both evidence and the beauty of language, appreciation of difference, and an ever deeper awareness of the pure joy of learning. I believe Denison does this remarkably well. We're committed to providing you with an educational experience with several important components. First, a critical grounding in the skills, values, and habits of the liberal arts. The active mentorship that defines a great college experience. A multiplicity of pathways to engage in rigorous academics. Co-curricular activities that allow you to follow passions while developing new ones. A campus culture that's welcoming and diverse. Programs to explore careers and professions and alumni and parent networks to get you started and a setting that allows students to go from reflective classrooms to metropolitan environments, both here and abroad, at multiple times during your Denison education. You've arrived at Denison during an exciting moment in our history. If you take advantage of it, you will have a fantastic four years that will help you build the kind of life that most of you probably can't even yet imagine. So let me give you five pieces of advice on how to get the most from Denison. And we did not rehearse our speeches tonight, but you're gonna notice some remarkable consistency. And that probably tells you something about the values of this college. First, go to every class, go prepared, and be engaged. <laughs> Nasa gave that same advice to our teenage son who went off to college last night. Your classes are the foundational element of your education. At Denison, you will study with some of the best professors in the world. Your classes will be challenging, Liberal arts colleges pride themselves on small classes and interactive classrooms. We expect everybody at this college to contribute to the intellectual life of the classroom. This starts by asking students to push themselves. This, this takes more than showing up. We expect every student to be prepared and to be engaged. This also means being open to and excited about hearing a variety of ideas and being challenged to think anew. There will be times at Denison when you are pushed outside your comfort zone. That's part of the academic experience. Take full advantage of the academics at Denison. If you only do this, the next four years will transform you as human beings. Second, embrace the liberal arts. Liberal arts classes will engage you in ways that will prepare you to think critically, understand profoundly, and connect broadly. In doing so, you will learn to ask big questions about the kind of life you wanna lead while also developing the capacity to build that life for yourself. One of the great advantages of this kind of education is that it will prepare you to adapt as your life unfolds. To do this, it's important that you take a wide range of classes. Don't make the mistake of coming to a college that has so much to offer and then narrowing yourself to a very particular path. During your first year, take some classes and disciplines you're excited about, but also take some classes and disciplines you've never heard of or you never thought you'd be interested in. Stretch yourself, get outside your comfort zone. The wider array of classes you take, the, more, the sharper your liberal arts skills will become. Third, get to know your professors and the Denison staff, all of whom make this a great college. Our faculty are among the best scholars and educators in the world. They're master teachers who believe in the power of student-faculty interactions. Mentorship is more than something we talk about. It's more than something we say, it's something we do. Our faculty will seek to connect and catalyze you, but for that to happen, you have to be open to it. We have more and more data that documents the power of student-faculty interactions. For example, the Gallup Purdue study finds that your relationships with faculty, faculty mentorship, is one of the greatest predictors for how successful you'll be in life. Make it a point during the initial three weeks of classes to see every one of your faculty during office hours. And then, get to know the staff across the college, from the folks who maintain our residential halls to campus safety officers and deans, administrators. Denison is filled with outstanding people who care about students and understand undergraduate education. Seek out mentors and be open to being mentored. Fourth, follow a passion and develop new passions. At Denison, the learning starts in the classroom, but then it permeates every single corner of campus life. Learning happens everywhere, from labs and studios to athletic fields and residential halls. 
Many of you already have things you're passionate about. You play a sport, you have a passion for music, theater, art, or you just or you love to do community service. Denison will give you amazing opportunities to follow those passions. At the same time, be sure to try some new things. Join a club, try an activity, do something that's totally new. Do something you never, ever, ever would have imagined doing in high school. So here's two pieces of advice. First, dive deeply into your activities, but don't sign up for everything. There's a lot to do at Denison and you can't do it all. And especially during this first crucial year, follow a passion, try a few new things, but also break the bad habit of high school of getting involved in everything. Your job is to commit yourself to learning, which means not overcommitting yourself. Second, and this one may be a little surprising, you have to embrace failure and embarrassment as necessary steps on the road to becoming educated. There's a, there's a wonderful quote whose author I have not been able to find, so if you know it, let me know, but it goes as follows. Take risks. If you win, you will be happy. If you lose, you will be wise. Here's a secret. Life gets much easier when you get over the fear of being embarrassed. And five, be good to each other and build the community that you want to live in. You will make a close group of Denison friends. That's a Denison tradition. But don't narrow yourself to one small group of friends. Make it a point to find the person in your residential hall whose life experiences are really different from your own and become friends. Enjoy your differences and also discover what you have in common. You will be expected not just by us, but by your peers to engage a diverse range of people around you and to be open to being challenged on, views of your, on your own views. This is a college where we learn from each other because we're open to hearing different views, we're open to voicing our own views, and we learn how to reconcile competing differences into new ways of thinking. Your experience at a residential college will be shaped by how you treat one another. Be a generation that always shows care and respect for one another. Remember that a college campus is a place where people are expected to make smart decisions for themselves and smart decisions for others, and where we expect everybody to step up and intervene when we see other members of our community getting ready to make a bad decision for themselves or for those around them. Don't stand idly by. We expect more, and quite frankly, the community you will live in will be the one you create. Much of the data we have about college in the United States suggests that these principles are most crucial during the first few months of your first year, especially as it relates to issues of alcohol and sexual assault. It's imperative that we rid the nation's campuses of sexual assault, including this one. That means a mindful focus on the start of a student's college career that should extend through all four years. Be a Denison class that looks out for each other and ensure that you get off to a great start. Julie said earlier that your banner will go up there. Many of you will come back for your 50th reunion and look at that banner. Be proud of the way you started your college career. If you see a classmate struggling, step in. Ask for help when you see someone that's getting ready to make a mistake and sit with somebody who's sitting alone. Put most simply, be a good friend early and often, see one another as friends, even the people you haven't met yet, and treat each other as such. That's how a great community is made. So that's it. Go to every class, be prepared and be engaged, embrace the liberal arts, get to know your professors and staff who make this a great college, follow a passion and develop a new passion, and be good to each other and build the community you want to live in. Let me, let me close with a personal reflection. Um, I'm a product of the liberal arts. And as I look back on my life and the lives of my friends and the students who I've worked with over the years, it's clear to me that a liberal arts education will help you identify the kind of life you want to lead while instilling within you the skills, values, and habits to build that life for yourself. You are about to experience a type and caliber of education that every young person in the world deserves, but very few have the opportunity to receive. Take advantage of it. Your education will not happen by accident. It will happen when you step up and step in. You have come to a great college, what I believe is this nation's finest college. I hope you will fall in love with it as much as I have. So lastly, a plea. Um, if you see me around campus and I ask how things are going, that's not a rhetorical question. Um, stop, let me know how things are going. One of the great joys for me being here for the last four years is getting to know our students. We do have the best students in the country. 
We're excited to welcome you into our community, and I'm excited to hear how your first few weeks and your first year is going. I now want to invite Dr. Laurel Kennedy, Vice President of Student Development, and Dr. Kim Copeland, Denison's Provost, to join me for the induction of the class of 2020. Will the members of the class of 2020 please rise? It is my honor to formally induct you, the class of 2020. May you cultivate habits of mind, share in our commitment to community, and embrace the values of our mission statement as autonomous thinkers, discerning moral agents, and active citizens of a democratic society. Welcome to Denison. You are now officially Denisonians. And before you sit, can the class of 2020 just kind of look on either side of you, and can we just applaud all of the mothers, fathers, aunts and uncles, grandparents and friends, and everybody else who got you here? So every college has its own song, its own alma mater, and Denison's no different. So to help you learn the melody um, to the song, To Denison, will first be sung for us by the members of this year's um, August orientation staff. And they're gonna sing the first verse once, and then after they sing the first verse once, we're gonna rise and join the group as they sing the alma mater the second time. And for those who want, the words are printed on the back of your program. Yeah. 